OK, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Damien, for, for that last presentation. Uh, and I think what we're going to do, we're just going to press on now. We're running a couple of minutes behind schedule, but it's not too bad. Um, so uh, one of the projects back in the day that, that sort of Selenium and WebDriver used to compete with was a project called Water. Um, and when we merged Selenium and WebDriver, um, we were really fortunate in that the Water guys went, actually, that's a really good idea. We're kind of bored of having to automate browsers. And what we'd like to do is do some fantastic stuff around APIs and making things nice and easy to use. Um, so the Water project is now based on, on WebDriver. And one of the committers on the Water project is uh, Jelko um, here, who is, has been doing some work with the Wikimedia Foundation. And he's going to tell us all about it. So please, welcome Jelko to uh, SeleniumConf. Hi. <clears throat> um, please remember the Batman. I'll tell you later what it's all about. But yeah, I, I tried to squeeze it in. There, there's a, like a bad joke about it. But yeah, remember it. So, um, who used Wikipedia today? Okay, nice number. So, um, anybody here could tell me the difference between MediaWiki, Wikipedia, and um, oh, there's the other thing. Yeah. Wiki, yeah. There's MediaWiki, Wikipedia, and uh, MediaWiki Foundation. Yeah, and there's like really, really. Uh, who, who just heard me say Wikipedia, blah, blah, blah? Yeah, thanks. So I'll, I'll say a few words about those. Yeah, I get confused myself. So you all know about Wikipedia. Wikipedia is just one of the Wikimedia projects. So we have a few others. I, I won't bore you with the details. Um, and the Wikimedia Foundation takes care of all Wikimedia projects, and I work for them. We are a non-profit. So, and MediaWiki is a software that we use to host all those sites. So, I work as a software tester, and my job is to test MediaWiki. And I would like to talk about a few problems that we faced and the solutions that we found. So, first, the problem that we had was communication. And like, by communication, I mean, like, when I joined the foundation, it, I was really, like, I, I had no idea how the software works. And they asked me to automate it. And it was really hard to me to figure out what to automate, because there's like, really a lot of features. So I've, like, not just me, there, there's a few of us working. And we were asking around, like, what's really important here? What should we automate? And when we got back the answers, like when we got the automation running, it was hard like, later to, to let the people know what was automated, what's working, what's breaking. So one of the tools that we use is called Cucumber. This is the website. And this is a Cucumber script. So I'm not sure how readable it is, but uh, I'll There. So Cucumber is um, meant to be a communication device. That's at least how I see it. Uh, like a nice side effect is that it's also a test automation tool. So here at the top, you can see that we specify a couple of sites where this test should run. Uh, we name the feature. The background um, is a step, like a setup step. It'll run before every of this, uh, before uh, each of the scenarios. And then, for example, let's say the first one. So given I'm at the login page, and then login page should open, and a few elements should be there. And so on, like trying to log in with incorrect usernames and passwords. And until the end, you log in as a valid user. And like when you log in, there should be text stating your name. So Cucumber was, I think, the best tool we have for, for like solving this communication problem. Another problem, so, and this is, this is the page like showing it. It's a simple login page, has username, and password, and login button. Uh, another problem that everybody here faced, like uh, anybody here uses page objects to solve this problem? Yeah, I didn't state that problem yet. So uh, it's maintainability, I would, I would guess. So like, it's hard to write a lot of code and keep it maintainable. 
and page object proved to be just like the perfect solution. So I, I won't talk a lot, a lot about it. So I, I know there, there have been a lot of talks. I'll show you just like a, a, a few simple examples. So the background step, given an I'm a login page, just has this code. And this is actual code, so I'm not showing you, like if you notice it at the top, it's, uh, it's actual uh, code from GitHub. So it just says with the login page. So for example, one of the more complicated ones would be login as user. So we just say on login page, login bit, username, and password that we get from somewhere. Uh, I can show you also the, the implementation of the login page. It's also almost trivial. There's like URL is defined here. We uh, we keep the, the base URL in environment variable that allows us to run the same test on, on different machines and environments. Um, there's a few elements defined. There's a few methods that help us like do the stuff that's, that's usually done in this page. Uh, another problem that uh, that usually pops up is it works on my machine problem. Um, we actually use several tools to, to solve that problem. So one of them is REM, and I, I didn't know this so far, so we use Ruby, Ruby bindings. We are one of those five million downloads. Um, REM has a couple of features that we use a lot. So one of them is um, a feature that allows you to install different versions of Ruby on the same machine and use them as needed. So when I was a freelancer, that was really useful because I had a few clients that were on different Ruby versions and everything. Another one uh, is gem sets, and Ruby software is usually uh, um, delivered as a gem, Ruby gem. Um, it's a software package, and um, if like also it's it's really useful when you're a freelancer, but also when you're working with different projects inside of a company, um, you can install a bunch of gems and, and versions of gem into a sandbox. It's called a gem set, and when you move to another project, you will automatically get when you CD in, in terminal when you CD into that folder, you will automatically get um, correct Ruby version and the, the set of gems that you need and all the versions of, of all required gems. This is the actual Ruby code. It's, it's uh, really trivial, so you just have to have a Ruby version and specify the Ruby version inside. And also, Ruby gem set, you just provide the name, and like it, the only thing important here is that it's unique for, for that project. Also, we use Bundler, but not this one. Um, Bundler is also a Ruby tool that um, allows you to specify uh, requisites for, for your uh, so re required software for a project. Um, for example, we depend on a f we, we use a few gems. So, for example, Cucumber and um, Parallel Test, Page Objects, and so on. Uh, so, the problem here is that um, it's if I configure my machine like. So the tests just work. It's hard to replicate the same environment on another machine and on continuous integration server. So REM and Bundler allow us to, to solve the problem like really, really trivially almost. So when, when you execute the Bundler command, it will um, figure out all the dependencies of all the gems and versions and everything. So you also commit that into your project and when something, like if you add or remove a gem or update a version, it will automatically, so you have to manually update those uh, on your machine, but when you push it into Git and it gets merged, everybody else will automatically get all updates and it proved to be really useful, especially for a continuous integration server. Like you just don't have to care about it being like uh, in, sync, in sync with other stuff. Whenever you update something and push and it gets merged, a CI server will just get all the new updates. Um, sometimes it, it also proved not to be trivial to install Ruby and like the correct version of Ruby and all the gems and Selenium and all required uh, dri uh, Selenium drivers, uh, yeah, browser drivers, and that proved to be not trivial problem, especially like if, when people have different operating systems and browsers and maybe they, they are not Ruby developers. So we use a, a tool called a Vagrant, and we have MediaWiki Vagrant. Uh, project that um, would, you, you just need to install VirtualBox and this Vagrant tool, and assuming that you have a Git, you just clone the repository and run Vagrant up. So I can show you how it's done. 
probably also need a here screen. So when you run being on top, it will like if you don't have if you don't have anything, so I, I run it before because it takes a while. I didn't want to risk taking it too much, too, too, too long. Um, if you don't have anything installed, it will download uh, the <laughs> correct version of Ubuntu. It will uh, clone the MediaWiki repository, um, download the database, and like do all, all the setup and like just like magic, you will have. So you can see the the. the the server running here, and yeah, this is Vagrant, and Vagrant uses Puppet like uh, underneath to, to do all this uh, configuration magic. And here it is. So you have, so you get at the end, like when, when uh, the machine is up, you, you get the, um, a headless server that has MediaWiki installed. So if you want to work on MediaWiki, it's already done and ready. We have a lot of volunteers working on MediaWiki, and this is one of the ways um, helping them get up and running. So the, sometimes the, the, the biggest problem is just like getting this stuff installed and, and configured, and this makes it really easy. It takes a while, like it takes an hour or two, depending on your machine and on your internet speed to download everything and configure. But like it, it requires no interaction from you. Um, then, like when we when we saw that, like when our testing department saw that this uh, MediaWiki Vagrant uh, tool is really useful, we decided to just um, add a, a, a few optional configurations that will install a Firefox inside and clone our test repository. So. You just need to uncomment a line in, in a configuration file, so you can. SSH into uh, the uh, the virtual machine. And CD into the folder with the tests and run the tests. Um, so the machine is headless uh, and to run Firefox, you need a screen. So now we are forwarding uh, the output of uh, this is, please notice that there's no Firefox in doc. So this was Firefox from the Linux machine uh, forwarded to my, uh, to the host machine. So it allows, it's also really, really easy to set up browser testing for, for somebody that, that would like to contribute. Yeah, another tool that we, that we use for like, fixing the it works on my machine problem is Jenkins. Uh, it's used for a lot of, like it, it's not its only use, but also like like it's I, I guess it's not a surprise like the test has to work, work on continuous integration machine. Like if it works just on your machine, it doesn't really count. Um, another problem that we have was uh, this browser automation thing, and um, luckily there's. Uh, there's no surprise that we, we picked Selenium. Uh, there is a slight surprise that we decided uh, to pick Ruby bindings instead of uh, PHP because MediaWiki is in PHP. Uh, but I, I can talk about that later. Uh, another problem that we had was um, running all those tests in all those browsers and like a ton of versions of operating systems and browsers. Mm, and like, being a non-profit, we really have limited resources. And uh, before I joined the foundation, there was a project where they tried to run Selenium tests. Um, like, and they had their own virtual machines. And as far as I know, it failed. Uh, so when we tried it again, uh, we decided not to bother with that. And just instead, we use Source Labs. Um, we have like grade A and grade B uh, list of browsers and versions. Um, so. You, you should be able to see any Wikipedia article in any browser known to man, but not all features will work the same in all browsers. So there are like some um, advanced editing features that require a normal, like, up-to-date browser. Um, another problem that we had was uh, visibility. So if you like have this perfect test automation solution and nobody really knows about it, and nobody really cares, um, 
like it's not you're not doing a great job. So we like we tried really hard to make it as uh, as visible as, and as open as possible. So we use a few tools to do that. One of them is Jenkins, also like I mentioned before. So our Jenkins is completely open. Uh, if you know, please notice that I'm even not logged in. So anybody with the URL can go here and can go into every um, every every build and see what's going on. So if, if there's a failed test, there will be also be a link to the source lab job. So like it, uh, it it makes it really easy for us to if if it, if we work with a team, for example, we we worked a lot with a mobile and and language team. So when they ask us to automate something, it'll be really easy for us like, to just point them to the test and say, and, and show them what's running and what's failing and so on. We, we also use, so Jenkins is used for a lot of stuff, so we use it for uh, reporting. So if you, if you go to any, let's go to one of the jobs that failed, it shouldn't be hard to find. Uh, and then, like, n no, no offense to iDriver, but those tend to be a bit, um, more difficult to, to get um, non flaky okay, while, while it's loading. So um, we use, uh, okay, so uh, it's Jen like who, who here uses Jenkins at all? Okay. Great. So I was, I was in a conference before this one, and I asked the same question. And like a couple of people raised their hands. Uh, that was a surprise. I thought everybody uses like at least some continuous integration, if not Jenkins. So I, I won't go into a lot of details of Jenkins. I, I see a lot of you uh, use it. Um, so we use it for reporting. So whenever a test fails, I will. A few of us will get emails and. Um, Will, uh, a bot will ping the RC channel saying something's wrong. So um, there's, yeah, Jenkins is really, really good and useful. So another thing that we uh, that we wanted to do is is like solve this like transparency and openness problem. Um, being uh, like a, um, a non-profit that works in this open knowledge movement and all the software is open source, we wanted to also our, our test animation to be completely open. So uh, we use Garrett to, to host our Git repository. Um, we also have a GitHub mirror because just everybody likes GitHub. We, we have some recently, we, we got some scripts that will automatically uh, pull, uh, uh, pull requests from GitHub and add it to, to our Garrett uh, code review queue. So that's, that's um, going on pretty nice. We, we didn't have a lot of um, contributions. But, yeah. That's another story. Um, we also use our like an open mailing list for communication, so with volunteers and between our team. Uh, so anybody uh, that's interested in in this kind of automation and maybe contributing, feel free to uh, to join uh, the um, the mailing list. Uh, I I hope I won't forget, but. I I plan to say it at the end, but I'll say it now before I forget. So I'll, I'll try to grab a table after the talk, and I'll have some stickers and badges and business cards. So if anybody wants to stay in touch or like, talk about this, feel free to join me outside. Um, we are also looking for, for volunteers. So MediaWiki is a huge project. There's a, a lot of developers that are both volunteers and employed by the foundation. Uh, that work on, on developing new features and new extensions, and there are just three of us working on, on test animation, and well, testing in general. And uh, we have an intern for this uh, summer, so that be, uh, that will be some help. And uh, we have a few volunteers helping. So if uh, if this sounds interesting, and if you would like to help us like write more test animation or, or better test animation, or if you would just like to tell us that we are completely wrong with something and we should switch to PHP or something, just please come out and let me know or just join the mailing list and we can discuss there. Uh, pre preparing for the, for the Selenium conference, I, I gave a similar talk to a few local conferences. So if you go to my um, blog, it's, like, it's my last name, the TU, 
uh, you, you'll find um, a blog post with all the links to do all the pages that, um, that I mentioned today. And there will be a link to a QA um, mailing list at the bottom. There will be screenshots and everything. So um, feel, free, feel free to take a look. Uh, my blog also has always uh, has a, a list of ways uh, how you can contact me. I'm on Twitter and Google Plus and like IRC and everywhere, and email of course. So feel free to ping there. And um, I, I, like the, the only thing that I would really like to, to stress out is that uh, um, the purpose of this talk was like to. There's like two things that I wanted to, to share. Like one of them was this um, this test automation framework that's probably like one of the rare that's completely in the open. I I would guess that Mozilla probably has one too, right? Like, and um, so you can see everything that we do. Like if you if you need code examples or like if you need solutions to to problems, like it's all documented there. It's on all the code. Uh, like. Um, we, we use a couple of um, third-party services, so we host Jenkins and CloudBees, and we use those labs for like, running our browsers in the cloud. So everything is there, everything's transparent. We have just one file with credentials that's hidden. Um, so I, I hope that um, our like our openness will help somebody like develop a similar solution or like just improve on our one uh, on our solution. And other thing that I would. I would like to, to do with this talk is get some contributors. So if you're interested in like, collaborating with us and getting some experience uh, with uh, drawing, uh, with working with Selenium in Ruby and like, all this stuff, let me know. We'll be more than happy to, to teach you everything we know like in, in return to some code that you leave behind. And as I, as I said, I'll be outside and I'll be here for the rest of the day, so feel free to, con to contact me and I'll have a business card and, ev and everything if you want to stay in touch. And I'm open to questions. <coughs> One question that I usually get is like, why did we pick Ruby instead of PHP since, since it's a PHP shop? But no, I guess nobody cares. Like, would anybody want to, to hear uh, the answer to that question? Yes. Yes. Yeah. A few people. So one of them was that PHP binding sucked big time, as far as I was. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was like there was from. So I didn't. I, uh, I was uh, I was hired when they made a decision to pick Ruby. So when people ask me like why do you pick Ruby, and I say oh, because that's the only thing that I know, and like I, I just I couldn't do any other other stuff. But yeah, I guess I could learn a lot in another language. Um, but yeah, uh, as far as I know, when I talk to other people like they were there before me, uh, they like they did some evaluation of other languages and, and platforms. And um, of all the tools that I mentioned, I think only Ruby had everything in, already in place. So let, let me just uh, um, take a quick look. So there's like this communication tool. We have Cucumber in Ruby. Um, this works on my machine. Uh, problem: we had RVM and, and Bundler. For um, okay, so browser automation like Selenium, you can you can do it in, in any of the supported languages, even in PHP. Like, but there was a yeah, there was a problem with PHP, with PHP bindings. Uh, there were like there were fr there was fragmentation and like the P the Facebook ones were like not touched in a couple of years. So I was like, not uh, after this conference, I'll I'll probably have a big fight back. Uh, like oh now we have this new and shiny PHP bindings. Like could you reconsider? So like. We will probably reconsider our, our choice. Like, like we don't have a lot of tests. We, I think, I think we are like still in the phase of selling our this browser automation uh, to the developers. I, I would like, like, I would really like in, in the next year or two that somebody from from the foundation comes here and say, oh yeah, like we don't have any tests anymore. Like just everybody writes their code, like as, as Facebook people do. But let's see what what happens. I think we are still selling. Like, I, I would. Um, I wouldn't like to insult anybody, but like, as far as I can see, like PHP developers are not really like test oriented, and that really surprised me. Like being a Ruby person, like in, in Ruby, it's I don't know, you would probably get burned like uh, if you didn't write tests. Uh, but um, yeah, so if that answers the question, go ahead. Is there a page somewhere with like a beginner's tasks or? Like a yes. 
if you join our uh, QA mailing list, so the question was, is, is there like an easy task list somewhere? Uh, that's where the answer is, well, like not a page, but uh, it should be like after after this talk, I'll make one. Uh, I like regular, uh, like from time to time, I'll browse, browse around the code and I'll find something and I'll think, oh, this is like the perfect thing for somebody completely new to like just like get their hands dirty and fix like a typo or whatever, like just, but just to get them involved. And I will send, like I, we have a thread on QA list, uh, like it's called Easy Task or something like that. So I'll just send like a note there saying, oh, I found this thing. Like if you like, it's, if it sounds interesting, let me know. I'll do my best to help you, like to, to get involved. So, yes, they'll be in in an hour or so. <laughs> Any more questions? Oh, so the question is, how did we connect uh, Jenkins and Source Labs, right? So it's uh, actually pretty trivial. So uh, the hosted solution that we use already has a deal with Source Labs, and they provide envir environment variable with Source Labs. Um, it's, a, it's a username and, and key, something like that. Like it's in, like a username password combination that you can just use, or like you can put it. Like, I think we at the moment we have it in configuration file, but I'm like I'm really considering getting rid of this configuration file and moving everything to environment variable. Like it's. Um, it's it's trivial. There, there's nothing there. Like, is, is there a problem that, uh, like it? Yeah, it's. If you take a look at, at our go, at our code, it's open in the GitHub, or like it will just drop by later on. I can show it in the code where it's done. Like it's. So we have it. Um, we have it's, uh, the test repository set up that you can run the test on a local browser in your machine. So if you just change a few environment variables in, in your terminal, you can run the test on your machine in any supported browser. Uh, you can run them like directly on Source Labs from your machine, um, or like or you can run them from the, from this uh, virtual machine on your machine. There's like a test, so from Jenkins you can also run it on Source Labs and there's like. Um, like uh, go ahead. Uh, well, like there is no uh, connection between Jenkins, like the, the software itself, and Source Labs, but. Oh, let me let me go back. So, so for uh, if so, the the question was, how do I go from uh, from a failing test to to a uh, to a Source Lab job? Was was a question like how do I go? So um, there is this. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on with, with Wi-Fi. So um, there's uh, uh, Source Labs uses uh, Selenium session ID variable to uh, to pro to link to the job. So if you just grab the session ID variable for, from from a, uh, um, from the browser and you you just paste it into the URL and go there. Was that the question? Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I, Maybe this will be faster, so I can. No, no, it's slow. So I, I can I can share it later. I'm not sure how how, how good with the time I am. Oh, five, five more minutes. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, maybe talk about this afterwards, but are you interested in getting other people's language implementations of tasks for the wiki? Uh, so the question was, am I interested in getting other language implementations for media wiki, meaning like PHP or like? Yeah, I don't think we'll move to Python anytime soon. I'm just wondering if you would be interested in either finding us some contributors to help out to help the project, or if you would be interested in having that in the region. Yeah, we should probably talk. So the question was, like, are we interested in getting help? The answer is yes, <laughs> if, if that was the question. Yeah, so like, we can really talk about details later. Yeah, uh, um, yeah <laughs> sorry, like, uh, the Wi-Fi doesn't work. So, um, I have, I have, uh, anybody has a, uh, do I have two more, when, when do I end?
Okay, it's so like three more minutes. I probably have time for one more question, and then I have a question for the audience. So, um, right, go ahead. Um, why uh, cucumbers post generation Yes, so we were solving this communication problem, remember? <laughs> so RSpec uh, is really good like for developers, and I use RSpec. I've used it for years, and like, I thought that cucumber was just like this, a lot of typing, something like Java or something like that. So, but uh, at, at the end, it proved to be a really, really good communication uh, tool. So I've, I've worked as a freelancer before joining the foundation, and I had like five, 10 clients that I really use Cucumber to communicate with them. So they, I would be hired to do some like, oh, do this, this automation thing. And like going, coming into a project, you have no idea what really needs to be automated. So you, you just say, okay, could you just like write me down like a little bedtime story of what you need? Then I would write the Cucumber scenario. I would send it back and say like, did I understand you correctly? And it would be like, Yes or no, like fix this, fix that. And when we agree on a cucumber scenario, it's trivial from then. Like, I can pretty much automate anything. Um, hey, so I guess I'm out of time. I have some, uh, so I have uh, the answer to the Batman question. Like, anybody wants to, to know what, how Batman is connected to all of this? One person? Okay, two, three, four? Okay, I thought it would be more. Like, if somebody told me, oh, like, there's this, joke and you have to wait to the end, like I, I would be shaking until now, but yeah, I guess it was a bad joke. So, did you know there's a place called Batman in Turkey? This is not a joke, this is actual like Google Maps. Uh, if you want to know the story, how I found about this, join me at the table. And I have a last question for the audience. So anybody like really got interested after this crappy talk in helping us out? One person, two person, three, oh wow, four, five, more than I expected, so uh, I'm, yeah, you're a great audience. Thank you very much. <laughs>